We've got balls. The NFL Draft is one of the most fascinating spectacles in all of sports. Each year, thousands flock to a rotating cast of host cities, meanwhile millions tune in around the world in order to boo Roger Goodell as he and others read the names of 256 young men off of note cards as fans overreact to their team's selections despite having no earthly idea of how these guys are going to play in the pros. However, the first NFL draft did not take place in the world-famous Radio City Music Hall, nor did it happen in an open-air theater in some big city late in April. And no, it did not happen in Roger Goodell's basement either. Instead, the original NFL Draft took place on February 8, 1936 in a Ritz-Carlton in Philly. But this story doesn't begin here. It begins three years earlier in 1933 when three new teams joined the league. First was the Cincinnati Reds. No, not the baseball team. These guys folded after just two seasons in which they won a combined three games and averaged just three points per contest. Second was the Pittsburgh Steelers, who have become a fairly successful franchise over the year considering they've won six Super Bowls, more than any other franchise in history outside of the Patriots, and have had just three head coaches since the moon landing in 1969. Finally, there's the Philadelphia Eagles, who were owned by Burt Bell, who after finding it difficult to sign the top talent out of college, proposed a draft during the offseason of 1935. The owners agreed, and the first ever NFL draft was set to take place the following offseason. Meanwhile, while all this was going on, a young man from Iowa by the name of Jay Burwanger was tearing it up at the University of Chicago. In 1935, Burwanger notched 577 rushing yards, 405 passing yards, and 359 return yards for six touchdowns. Oh, he also kicked five extra points and played defense. This all on the way to receiving the first ever downtown athletic club trophy for being the best player east of the Mississippi. You probably know this award by its current alias, the Heisman Trophy. Oh, and how could I forget, in a 1934 game while playing Michigan, Burwanger was tackled by future president of the United States, Gerald Ford, who for his troubles busted his own face open and received the iconic scar that you see here under his left eye. In short, it was pretty clear who the first player taken in the inaugural draft was going to be. And the team slated to take Burwanger with the top pick was, of course, Bell's Eagles, who had finished with a record of 2-9. Unfortunately for them, Burwanger knew his worth, and in order for the Eagles to sign him, it would cost them $1,000 a game. To put this into perspective, most players around this time made around $50 to $100 per contest, and with the Eagles being a relatively new team, they were unable to afford the services of the star halfback. So in short, Burt Bell's master plan for snagging the best young talent out of the college ranks ended up being a complete waste of time. This seems to happen a lot in Philadelphia. So in an attempt to salvage the pick, the Eagles offered Burwanger a whopping $150 per game, less than a sixth of his initial asking price. Unsurprisingly, he declined and was shipped to the much richer Chicago Bears in exchange for tackle Art Buss, who himself played two seasons in Philly. When he arrived in Chicago, Burwanger demanded a two-year no-cut deal worth an exorbitant $25,000, or roughly half a million in today's money. However, even this was too rich for Bears owner George Hallis' blood, and after being unable to come to an agreement, Burwanger walked away from the game without ever playing a single down in the NFL. So you may be asking, what happened to the original Heisman Trophy winner and number one overall pick in NFL history? Well, he decided to take a job as a foam rubber salesman and began coaching part-time at his alma mater. He also wrote a sports column for the Chicago Daily News and fought in the Navy during World War II. After the war, he started J. Burwanger, Inc., which manufactured plastic and sponge rubber strips for car doors, trunks, and farm equipment. He'd go on to sell the company in the 1990s while it was grossing roughly $30 million per year. Burwanger passed away in 2002 at the age of 88, never expressing any regrets about skipping out on professional football. 